We all know Nirvana, and some of us listen to them, and some of us, like me, do too much research in their free time. Well, no beating around the bush. Time to get into this iceberg. Above the surface. Nirvana, of course, is known as a 90s band, despite starting in 1987. The band also popularized grunge music, style, and the overall scene. This is just the general idea someone gets out of the band, but it goes much deeper. On the surface. If anyone is even a slighter bigger fan than the average person, they obviously know about Kurt Cobain's mental health, often being described as depressed. Due to this, there were a lot of gossip articles on Kurt Cobain exactly, not Chris or Dave, the other members. Under the surface. The slighter bigger fans already know about the formally described depression Kurt Cobain suffers from, but people who know more know about his addiction to heroin. This has been talked about in gossip articles that I've stated earlier, yet most looked over. Obviously, if someone knows this, they'll look for little signs everywhere. That's where the theory, everyone in the band is secretly high all the time, comes in. Nirvana's interviews are described to be too human or too funny for the average band in that time, concluding that they were all high in every interview performance. And then comes the theory of Kurt's songs all being about his drug abuse and or depression, even after Kurt stating his lyrics aren't more than just random poetry. Going deeper. Here we go deeper into frontman Kurt Cobain's personal life. Here we reference a two hour long movie, Kurt Cobain Montage of Heck. In this movie, it dives deeply into his younger ages, citing words from himself that his life was never as good since he was seven years old. Also in the movie, it shows how he kept switching from his mom's house, dad's house, and other relatives' households until leaving him homeless, hanging out under a bridge. I really recommend you to watch the movie yourself if you want to get the entire idea of this section, but I advise you not everything in that movie is exact. Going more deeper. This section references another movie, one that is more citable. This one's available on YouTube, so I'd recommend you watch it too. I'll link it in the description. This movie covers the suspicion and holes in Kurt Cobain's death and suicide, which Tom Gratt, the private investigator Courtney Love hired when Kurt was missing, said himself. He does not believe it was a suicide. He has a website with a bunch of evidence and sources, so I'll also link that too. An important theory that the movie covers is that Kurt Cobain did not write his suicide note, pointing to the idea that there was someone else in the picture. Someone has done this, but it was definitely not Kurt Cobain. Suicide is believed to be staged. Going way deeper. This section covers an extension to the last section's huge theory and other side theories that not many people know about. The extension is that Courtney Love conspired with somebody else, known to be named Alan Wrench, to kill Kurt Cobain. The person who helped with this evidence is a man named El Duce. He stated that Courtney Love herself went up to him and asked him to murder Kurt Cobain. This statement was proven time and time again, even by polygraph tests, to be true. On one day, Al Duce accidentally slipped the name of the actual guy, we believe, who did it, Alan. Later on, in a short period of time, El Duce was found dead in another stage suicide on a train track, just like Kurt Cobain. There's a pattern here, too. Kristen Pfaff was a former bassist of Courtney Love's band, Hole. In June of 1994, just about two months after April, Kurt's death timeline, Kristen was found dead, another staged suicide. Now, let us approach the side theories. Some of these may not be true, but it's up to you to decide. The first one is about Courtney Love. 
too, actually. Courtney Love has stated to meet Kurt when she, he was still dating his prior girlfriend, Tracy. She states she met him and told him his girlfriend was chubby, and Kurt play fought her on the floor. Though this was proven to be untrue, they met on October 11th, 1991, having intercourse on the first night and getting married later in February 1992. The other theory about her is that she was the person to get hooked on heroin. While he's tried it before, it's believed that she was the one who made him addicted. There's not much solid proof of this, but I personally believe this one. The last side theory is a touchy one, the kind that's found in the Sea of Nirvana YouTube comments. But nonetheless, I've added it here. By some people, and by some shaky evidence, people have concluded that Francis Bean Cobain, Kurt and Courtney's child, was actually not Kurt's child at all. People's biggest reason for believing this is that Francis had an abrupt change of look as you see on screen. People state that Frances actually had surgery to look like Kurt Cobain because she wasn't his child after all. This one's a shakier theory, but you can make up your own mind on it. The Bottom Here is one of the darker theories yet, in the video that contains this theory in the comments section. I'll read out this comment to you that was a common theme in the comments. Guys, after a long, long time, I'm seeing it could be Dave. From the way he acted, acts, and a lot of watching and body language and all that, Dave wanted to be the front man. Kurt, y'all didn't see a lot of was shutting down Dave stuff. Some with his comments and Dave didn't like it at all and is a little cocky, sob. He hardly looks him in the eye and I see him getting jealous and angry in his body language. Could be Courtney and Dave. She would be too wussy to pull the trigger. This implies that instead of Courtney and Alan killing Kurt, it was Dave and Courtney killing Kurt. I deem this the darkest theory yet. Dave and Kurt were close. They were bandmates, happy in photos together, friends. It would be extremely horrible to think Dave would do it. I'll link the video for this comment section, since it includes the entire timeline and loads of theories, which is very important. Well, that's it for this iceberg. I've never done these kinds of videos before, so tell me if you like them. Bye now.